Hello, my dear friends. The big question indeed, if you want to invest in the stock market is, is it likely we are going to see a recession um, soon? Because then it's better to wait. Um, I'm investing in Tesla and uh, I've asked myself this question. I'd like to share with you the results uh, because it is very important. Um, so what you see, people often say, oh, we had the longest bull market ever since 2009. Uh, and, uh, and so a recession is very likely uh, to happen anytime soon now. So let's verify the numbers. Well, uh, actually, you see that there have been red numbers here. That's strange. They said that it was only positive the last 10 years. And yes, if you look at the S&P 500, you can see the S&P 500 has been quite positive, though you see, huh? 2018 had a negative year. Hmm, okay. So last year we had actually a negative year. Um, up until today, it's positive. But that doesn't look like the best um, I, uh, <coughs> continuous boom markets in 2009 if you have already last year a negative year for the S&P 500. But you have another negative year in 2015, 2011 also zero so actually okay since 2009 we didn't have a terrible year like 2008 but it's not been uh, all green uh, actually we had a negative year only recently last year so that's the first thing to note um if you look at uh not the s p 500 but at the global stocks because i think that's what you should do um uh, to judge uh, stock returns, um, then you see that uh, actually 2018 was not a small minus year because these are, um, if you look at the, my chart here, you can have uh, also see this chart. Uh, I will place the link below. You can check it out yourself. But these are uh, uh, total returns, uh, dividends included uh, for global stocks versus the US dollar went actually down minus 9%. So we just had a negative year for stocks. Uh, so, uh, and a big one, minus 9%. Uh, I mean, okay, it can be a lot bigger, but um, that's, that, that, that doesn't, that, like that shows immediately what, that we are not in the, the, the best and longest bull market ever. Uh, let's look at the average returns for the last 10 years. It's 9%. At the end of 2018 is that great compared to historical returns no because actually since this year starts since 1928 it has been nine percent on average so the last 10 years so that's excluding this bad year of 2008 and you start counting in 2009 you have an average return of nine percent so they say that we had the longest and, uh, and most impressive bull market uh, ever already in a recession is uh, around the corner. But actually, we just had a recession, a negative year in 2018. Um, uh, and um, um, and uh, actually, average returns uh, are only 9% per year, which is the average since 1928. If you look back, Yes, the last 10 years were a lot better than the 10 years before that because we had 10 years, an average return of 0% in at the end of 2007 and at the end of 2009, we had 0% returns um, the last 10 years. That was very bad and it doesn't get worse than that because if you look, uh, and why is that? Because there's a negative year of 2008, but you also have all these years included. Uh, for the last 10 years and so that's why it's zero percent so that was a very very bad uh, investment stocks um, here in this decade since then it's been okay it has been nine percent per year on average but that's not a great investment uh, because if you count for inflation true inflation which is six percent per year almost 5.8 uh, you have only a return of about three percent per year and then you have to deduct your expenses such as uh, capital gains taxes in some countries, uh, your transaction costs uh, and all that. And uh, well, what do you have left? What did you really make? Maybe 1%, 2% huh? per year. Not a great investment stocks the past 10 years, but uh, not a terrible investment, that's for sure. Like uh, the decade before, where after inflation, you lost 5% per year 
and that's excluding your expenses and that's including of all dividends so um, <clears throat> but where can we go to well uh, if you look historically uh, we can have an average return of not nine percent but an average return of what is the peak here uh, well we have an average return here of uh, 16 17 19 percent per year at the end of the 80s uh, for the last 10 years that's very good that's the potential for stocks hmm? and uh, usually this is behind where you have like if you look it, it goes in booms and bursts when did we have a, such a bad uh, return uh, in stocks for the last 10 years zero percent well we only had it in 1939 that's in 1930 the Great Depression started. Okay? We started in 1928. This was actually a boom area. I don't have the returns here, but the roaring 20s, if you heard about it, were boom times and stocks went up a lot. The last year was 1928 and then the crash started and they call this the Great Depression uh, crash, crash. And for good reason, look at this every year. It was even worse uh, than, um, than the 2008 crisis. But um, if you look at the average returns for the last 10 years, you have uh, you lost money in fiat value and after inflation, you lost even more than 5%. You lost 7% per year at the peak. So um, that can happen and it just happened also similarly in 2008. So people are still a little bit uh, traumatized by that. Um, but what happens after is, well, that stocks go back up. And what you see is that 10 years later, uh, it starts basically in 1942 only, uh, but from then the stocks go up a lot and average returns 10 years later goes up from first it goes to 9% per year like we are today, but then you go up to about 17% per year at the peak, uh, 17, even 18, even 20% per year uh, at the peak uh, that you make in stock market. And that's very likely to come for the next 10 years. Uh, why? Well, it's in boom and bust cycles. Huh? Uh, so um, what you see here uh, on this chart is the returns, but after real inflation. Huh? So these are the returns that you see here. Huh? Uh, and it's the 10 year returns, average returns. But what you see is that stocks are blue. Uh, they go up here. And indeed, by the 1950s, 60s, you have on average 10% return after inflation. Uh, that's great. Uh, then it goes down again. And in the 1970s, you actually make a loss after inflation of minus 5% for the last 10 years. Then it goes back up. In the 1980s, 90s, you make again, or you have made again, 10% per year after inflation the past 10 years. Then it goes down and it's really bad again in 2008. You have uh, these minus 5, minus 6% per year after inflation. And so now we're here. We went back up out of the valley but what's next are we what's most likely here that we continue the ride up or that we go down again it is of course that we continue the ride up that is like 90 percent certain huh? it's only a 10 percent chance that we go back down here because these cycles are there for good reason they are inversely correlated to the commodity cycle and then we look at gold it's the same story but the other way around here, gold is, is even more volatile as stocks. After real inflation, you lost about 8% per year here in the 50s, 60s. But then after real inflation, at the end of the 80s, you made 20% per year. After real inflation, 25% huh? per year. In 10 years, every year for 10 years, you made that. Huh? So gold can make a lot of money, but it also can lose a lot of money. And it's inversely correlated to stocks because when stocks disappoint, gold performs. Inversely, stocks go back up here in the 80s, 90s and perform and gold disappoints and destroys the value of your investment. Uh, and inversely, again, here stocks disappoint in uh, the, the last uh, big recession from 2000 to 2010. Uh, and then gold did very well and stocks do minus 5%, but gold took plus 10, plus 12% after real inflation. So stock uh, gold is a great hedge against stocks. But um, gold is actually a reflection of the commodity market. If you look at all commodities, not just gold, silver, um, uh, iron, grains, 
uh, metals, uh, uh, agricultural commodities, you will see that they actually perform very similarly to gold. Uh, so, um, and why is that uh, cycle there? Uh, well, it's just based on supply and demand. Uh, you have a shortage of commodities. Um, um, I explained several times, it's a very simple uh, yeah, situation where uh, commodities are, uh, are only mined and are only created when the price goes up. Uh, only then um, farmers will expand their farmlands and, 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 and metal miners will invest in, in, in extra uh, capacity um, and gold miners will start to look for more gold. Uh, they only do that when prices go up uh, and um, that will only happen when there's a shortage. And so when that happens, the price goes up, but it doesn't the supply doesn't come online immediately. It takes a couple of years often to get that uh, mining production online uh, or get to make these extra farmlands uh, yield uh, crops. And so in the meantime, the supply uh, only gets further behind of the, the rising demand, which is always there due to our growing economies. And so price continues to go up a lot. Um, and also people start to invest more and more in production capacity, but not taking into account all the other ones that are, have also started investing in production capacity that's not online yet. And so at, at a certain point, usually after uh, only 10 years of rising prices, you get this massive increase in supply and that, uh, and, and that becomes finally higher than the demand. And, uh, and then the prices start to collapse and it takes a very long time takes 20 to 30 years that prices start to collapse uh, because all that uh, um, because there is so much uh, new production uh, that um, that it takes 10 it, it takes 20 to 30 years to see a shortage again to see the economies economies catch up in growth uh, that that need so many uh, resources and um, uh, but typically as as commodity prices go down uh, that's very good for the economies because as fuel prices, oil prices become cheaper, people can drive more, uh, can buy more goods, um, uh, goods become cheaper. Uh, and, and so um, it's very good for the economy. So economies will grow again. And so this will show in uh, uh, stocks, companies expanding, uh, selling more goods uh, and services and, and, and expanding and showing more profits on the books, which pushes up uh, stock market uh, valuations. So it's inversely correlated for a good reason. And so we just had basically a commodity boom, a gold boom from 2000 to 2010. And indeed, massive uh, production capacity has come online. If you look, for example, at the oil or uranium, uh, it has been massive um, uh, increase in, in, in supply. And, and, and we just started basically uh, the past five to 10 years uh, this commodity pair cycle, uh, but this will likely take an, at least another 10 years to uh, to, to see basically a uh, demand catch up with uh, enormous glut in supply that we've seen. Uh, so um, mm, there might always be exceptions. Uh, maybe there will be an exception for uranium, uh, but even there, I, I studied it in depth. Just look at my videos. Uh, it's, it, it does not look like there will be a supply glut, sorry, a, uh, a, a shortage uh, anytime soon. Uh, it, it takes probably another five years or 10 years, even for uranium. But um, okay, so, so, so this is very important uh, to judge uh, whether we're in a global bull market for stocks here or a global bear market. And we're clearly with a 90% probability in a bull market here for another few decades. So then the question is like, okay, but even during bull markets, you can have strong recessions. And that's certainly true. Uh, if we look back here, um, uh, we had a bull market, uh, well, in the, in, in the eighties and nineties for stocks, uh, it's a com very comparable to, well, actually, no, we should look at the forties and fifties huh? because the, the era we just had was a deflationary depression, just like in the thirties. That's what just happened from 2000 to 2010. Not the crisis that we saw also in the seventies when also um, uh, stocks performed poorly uh, after inflation negative. But um, uh, um, uh, but what, what happens here was that um, uh, 
But well, it is it's, it is it's actually quite similar, but there is a difference here. It, it was an in, inflationary crisis. The 30s was a deflationary crisis, and in 2010 we had also a deflationary crisis. But uh, all these periods uh, did uh, were also uh, commodity cycles. Was it so? I, I I'm not sure about the 30s. I would have to verify. But. Um, if you look at, at okay, after such a, a decade, it was bad returns. Uh, we get like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, very good returns here for um, for stocks, this whole period here, until the 60s. So that's three decades. This is why I think it's so unlikely that gold will do well and, and commodities, because what you see is after a deflationary crisis, that you see that it takes actually a lot longer for gold to perform well and that gold performed a lot better actually here during a deflationary crisis. But we don't see the returns here. You don't see it uh, for gold. Um, uh, yeah, but what you can see, yeah, stocks perform very poorly after real inflation here, um, even worse than the last uh, from 2000 to 2010. Um, but this also shows actually in gold returns that are actually even better, but you can't see it on this chart, sadly. Um, yeah. But recessions do happen, of course. Uh, so you see that from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you have great uh, stock market returns on average 10%, even on average 20% at the end of the 60, uh, 50s. Uh, but you do see that from time to time, you have a very negative year here. Every five years, minus 10%, minus 10%, minus 10%, minus 1%, minus 10%. Um, so it does happen, but it's only every five years that you have a negative year. Huh? Um, so where are we here? Well, we just had a negative year. Very likely the next four years, we will see positive years and very strong positive years. Uh, that's the most likely here. And that's very important. Then the question is, um, should you buy um, Tesla at v current valuations um, or uh, should you wait uh, because it just uh, bounced up and the same for just the general stock market index. First, the uh, general stock market index, I just have the S&P 500 here, but what you see is that, uh, yeah, 2018 was a negative year and that's this year from here till uh, here yep yeah so so this was a bad negative year we just had that behind us now we have 2019 it's up but is it up a lot no because we just had again a correction here that we're coming out of uh it's up 10 15 percent um but if you look back actually basically we've been going sideways now for one year and a half uh, since 2018 We've been going sideways. Yes, it's 15% up, but it's minus 10% here. So you're basically buying the same value as you bought at the end of 2017. And so uh, one year and a half ago, uh, stock price were the same. Is that a good deal? Yes, if you're in a global st uh, bull market, yes, you can be very happy to be able to buy stocks uh, for the same value as they were one year ago, because very likely the next five years you will see something like this it will go up again a lot and this kind of sideways movement is common to happen after it went up a lot here we saw the same in 2015-16 uh two two years of sideways movement that's a great time to buy not in the beginning but at the end yes because we're very close to going up again five years so um that's the situation here um and then if you look at Tesla, I think, yes, it's very important to buy, even though we saw a low of 180 and we're back at 220. Uh, this is a great price. And, 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 and I don't think it's wise to wait for a double bottom, for example, because it's actually not likely to happen. <clears throat> if we look back at a, a, a strong growth stock like Tesla, a 50% correction is rare, is rare. Huh? That's very rare to see it go down 50%. If it happens, well, it's a major correction, very similar to here, 280, we went to 150, almost 50%. What happens after that? Do you see the chart? Well, it goes up as fast as it went down. 
So very likely we will see this rally go up to here before we take a break at 250. Without you being able to get in at 10% uh, cheaper any day. Huh? Uh, so, so, so that's why it's important. And then maybe at 250, we will see a correction that goes to 235. Huh? So, so yes, it's important to buy at current valuations because very likely you can't buy cheaper anymore in the future. Because a Tesla, a strong growth stock here, basically this, this also moves a little bit like the index, but much more strong. Huh? So yes, you have sideways movements for a couple of years, but then it's 10x, yeah? goes from $30 to, 200, uh, to $300. It's suddenly a 10x, and then you go sideways again for a couple of years. But we just went sideways here from since 2014. Let's call it 2015, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, five years, four years and a half, we've been going sideways. So we are very, very close to doing another 10x for this stock. And then it will be five years sideways again. And I think that we're very close to that. So we go up from 200 to 1,500 or so. And that will happen how fast? It happens in one to two years time. So uh, this is an amazing opportunity. Uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, yeah, uh, it, what uh, the traditional markets have leverage in contrast to the crypto markets. I mean, crypto markets are way too volatile to use that instrument. But yeah, in in the traditional stock markets, you can use that. You can use. You can say like, okay, uh, I'm gonna buy fifty percent more than the cash I have uh, to invest in this stock. Uh, and you could even use real leverage, like you don't have the other cash to back it up or it's in other investments that you're unwilling to, to sell. Uh, that's okay. Um, because what does it mean? Well, you just have 50% more stock and it means you will make 50% more profits and, then, uh, and also 50% more losses. But what does that mean if you make 50% more losses? It just means that if it drops from 200 to 100, well, uh, you didn't lose 50%, you lost 75%. And you probably get a margin call also. And you can choose to risk more money by adding more money to your account or just being liquidated and, and selling stocks, selling Tesla stocks. And actually, that's the right uh, decision there. I think you can just allow yourself to be liquidated and you will end up selling half your stock from 100 when you go from 100 till 50 and it, it goes back again in half your broker will end up selling half your stocks um and so yeah that's the risk but is that a risk yes it's a risk but it's a very low probability uh, that it gets good by here by 50 percent again and goes from uh, 200 to 100 dollars as a very low probability and even then you will, won't get a margin call um, because you only leveraged 50%, you didn't leverage 100%. So if you leverage only 50%, you only buy 50% more stocks, you will only get a margin call when you go below 100. So, but the nice thing is, there is an 80% chance here is going to do 10x in a couple, in only a couple of years. If you leverage up at 50%, you have 50% more stocks, you will also make a lot more money. And the beautiful thing is here that uh, let's say you invest 10K. Well, now you invest 15K. It go, though goes times 10. So that's 150K, the value of your stock. But also you can take out the leverage. Like suddenly you can borrow not, uh, like if you invest 10K, yes, you can borrow 5K, but then your maximum, maximum uh, levered out. Um, but then the stock goes up. 250k, uh, then suddenly you are able to borrow 75k. Okay, you borrowed already 5k, but you can borrow another 70k against your stock, uh, and you can invest that in something else, other stock. But you can even invest it in crypto or in real estate. Uh, some brokers allow you to just take it out as cash, and you don't have to sell your Tesla stock because typically 
if it's a successful company, which I think very likely the case with Tesla, uh, similar to a company like Google or Apple or, 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 or Amazon, it's a real winner. Uh, it's not some kind of temporary winner and then it goes down a lot like Netscape or Yahoo or, 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 or American Line. These were all like, yeah, they went down a lot, but, uh, up a lot, but after they went down a lot, they were failing business that failed in the end. And, and of course, then if you leverage up and you take out another 70K and you invest in other stuff, but then your stock fails, you will get margin calls and that 70K needs to come back. And so you need to sell off your own other investment again. But if it's a successful stock, uh, it will go up actually a lot more. Yes, it will do 10K and then it will go five years sideways, but it won't go back to the previous valuations. No, it will maybe uh, uh, go sideways a little and, and up, down, up, down, but... Um, but it will never go back to a, it will never be good by 10 again. And so, yeah, the leverage, uh, the extra loan, margin loan that you take, you can invest in other stuff and you will not have to pay that back. Um, and you pay a very low interest of only 4% per year or so. So this is the way to, um, yeah, make money and use the tools that the traditional stock market offers you, uh, great tools. Uh, uh, to um, make um, great profits uh, and, and, and take risks that are calculated. Huh? Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show and uh, I hope uh, you take advantage of the still very cheap prices. Tesla went up to... Um, yeah, you have to look at it. Yeah, it sucks if you didn't buy below 200, but... I mean, 220 is still a great price. It's still the same price as five years ago. So don't let yourself be uh, scared by these rising prices and, 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 and take the opportunity and, um, and make sure your cash is invested in something that um, uh, in case, because the plan here for me personally is to use my cash to invest in crypto. But of course, it's not certain uh, you will see such a big crash to be able to buy back that crypto. That's not certain. And, um, and even if it does, it's actually very likely that, um, that stocks will do well in the meantime. And if you invest in the meantime here, you will have more cash and more opportunity to uh, invest in crypto. Thanks for watching.